Hi, welcome back to Low Carb Abode. This is Ludmilla. As you know, in this little kitchen, we only make low carb, grain free and healthy foods. If this sounds good to you, make sure to join us by liking this video and hitting the subscribe button. Before we get started today, I just want to say thank you because this channel now has over 10,000 subscribers and this is just amazing and it's so motivating and encouraging to me and it really helped me to keep this going. So to all of those of you who've subscribed from my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope all of you had a wonderful and blessed week with some delicious foods and if not, I hope this week will look better for you. Unfortunately, in my home, most of us were sick all of last week. Nothing too serious, but it truly did knock us down for a while there. And it's just terrible when you see your kids being sick. And I felt guilty, I got to say, because I couldn't make homemade meals and we relied on junk food for quite a bit. But on the bright side, it did make me appreciate that I can make homemade meals for my family most of the time. And eating standard American food again surely reminded me that it actually does not taste as good as I remember it and also that it makes my body feel even worse. So even though my voice still sounds a little rough, I'm back to business now with the most popular recipe on my website and this is the Keto Rustic Bread. I've been meaning to make a video of this recipe for a while and I thought today is the perfect day. It can get me started to eat better and clean again and I just love my rustic bread. So this bread comes extremely close both in look and in texture to a traditional artisan bread. It has a wonderful chewy and thick crust and tastes like a rustic whole wheat bread. But of course it is completely wheat free and grain free and it is keto friendly. And once you see how easy it is to prepare, I know you will want to try it too. So let's get cooking. We're going to start off by whisking together cream cheese and ricotta cheese. You will need 4 ounces of softened cream cheese. Make sure that your cream cheese is truly softened, otherwise you will not be able to combine the ingredients well. Um, if you forgot to take out your cream cheese on time out of the fridge, you can just pop it in the microwave for a few seconds or you can soften it over a double boiler. And to this add half a cup of ricotta cheese. The ricotta will provide your bread with a nice flavor, texture and slight sweetness. And just whisk it together. If possible, buy the whole ricotta cheese, the full fat that has no added stabilizers. Now crack 5 eggs. and two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and whisk all of this well. Okay, and now we are already ready to add our dry ingredients. We need two cups of blanched almond flour, a quarter cup of coconut flour, four tablespoons of psyllium husk powder. I use psyllium husk to absorb some of that moisture and it also gives the bread this great chewy crust. We need a whole tablespoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, and lastly I'm adding one teaspoon of nutritional yeast. The nutritional yeast is an optional ingredient and you can leave it out it doesn't actually help to rise the bread, but it does provide the bread with this old-fashioned yeasty flavor. Plus, it's really nutritious. And at this point, you can also add different spices or herbs if you like. I often add a few caraway seeds to this bread, but today I won't, so my kids can enjoy this bread as well, and they're not big fans of caraway seeds. So now just whisk all the ingredients together. I try to first combine the dry ingredients on top, and then I mix everything.
I'm going to switch out to a spoon now because it's getting a little hard to whisk it. And I'll just stir a little more. Okay, and this is our bread dough. I will let it sit for five minutes now so the psyllium husk and the coconut flour can absorb the moisture some more. You can go ahead now and use this time to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and line your baking sheet with parchment paper. The dough will be just slightly sticky, so to shape it into a loaf, I'm going to wet my hands. And I like to have a little bowl of water next to me so I can keep my hands wet. I'm going to shape it into an oval loaf. And I want the loaf to be about 7 inches long and 4 inches wide. And to give our bread this artisan look, I'm going to score three diagonal lines on top. And I'm just going to wiggle each line apart a little bit. Because this bread doesn't rise as much as a traditional wheat bread. And now we can go ahead and bake this loaf for one hour. Let's learn today about the difference between active yeast and nutritional yeast. The yeast that's used to make grain-based breads and other baking goods is actually a living organism. In the form of yeast powder, these organisms are actually dehydrated, but then can be reactivated again by adding moisture and heat and flour. The yeast then begins to feed on the sugar and the flour, and then a fermentation process begins in which carbon dioxide is released. And this gas is trapped in your bread, which makes it rise. The yeast also then provides your bread with this distinctive flavor and aroma that you associate with traditional bread. Now, nutritional yeast is actually made from the same yeast species as the yeast that we use for baking bread. But in the manufacturing process, this yeast is actually killed and can therefore no longer feed on sugar or help leaven a bread. But it retains a wonderfully cheesy, yeasty flavor and it is super nutritious. It is especially a great source of B vitamins, especially vitamin B12, B6 and folate, which makes it a great food for pregnant women and also vegetarians or vegans who miss out on these vitamins because they don't eat meat. It may not be suitable for individuals with inflammatory bowel diseases or Crohn's disease because it can trigger inflammatory reactions. I like to add it to my keto breads for a richer flavor and because of that extra nutritional boost. The moment has come. Our bread is all baked. So the bread is just warm now. It's not hot anymore. And I just want to show it to you. As you can see, it's very sturdy. It has risen a bit. And I can feel a very nice crust here. And I'm just going to slice it now. Let's take a look. So now you can really see the thick crust and it's nice and soft on the inside. You can see it doesn't rise all that much, but it will be delicious. So last night I actually made some sugar-free Nutella and that's what I will use to eat my bread slice today. Oh, I'm so excited.
It tastes so good. It has a nice flavor that just goes great with the Nutella. It's very sturdy, so you can just pack anything on it. Cheese, meats, eggs, anything will go with it. It's just really the kind of bread that you picture when you think of a down-to-earth, wholesome farmer's breakfast. Yes. And this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, I will put the link to the printable recipe in the description below. Make sure to comment and let me know what you think of this rustic keto bread. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.